the peritoneal cavity is produced by the um, peritoneal membrane and it encloses the stomach and most of the intestine. This membrane is called the peritoneum. It is serous membrane that produces serous fluid. It is divided like other serous membranes into the visceral and the parietal. The visceral peritoneum covers organs. The parietal peritoneum lines the cavity. Um, this serous membrane secretes almost two gallons of fluid a day, seven liters. And the volume at any one time is about 50 mils. Now, the rate of fluid moving into the cavity is accelerated by disease and can cause accumulation of that um, fluid in the peritoneal cavity, and this is called ascites. The greater omentum um, is part of this mesentery that connects the stomach to the small intestine. It starts at the outer curvature of the stomach, and it forms a really large pouch um, from the body wall and anterior surface of the intestines. And it contains adipose tissue, and this, um, this greater omentum provides some padding as well as protection. The lesser omentum connects the stomach to the liver. Um, it provides an access route for blood vessels and other structures entering and leaving the liver. There are blood vessels between the two layers of mesentery. Uh, the falciform ligament connects the liver to the anterior body wall. Um, here you can see that the greater omentum has been cut. It's attached to the greater curvature of the stomach. The lesser omentum is connected to the lesser curvature of the stomach. And here it's showing the, the retroperitoneal organs, which include the pancreas, the duodenum, um, as well as the kidneys. The stomach is a muscular sac, and uh, when it's full, it can expand to contain about a liter and a half of material. This will be very uh, um, loose, soupy material called chyme. It's viscous. It's very acidic because of the hydrochloric acid in the stomach, and it's a combination of food, saliva, and gastric gland secretions. The regions of the stomach are the the um, the um, cardiac region, the body, the fundus, and uh, the pylorus. And sometimes those are used to um, identify where in the stomach somebody has a um, an ulcer. So pyloric ulcer would be in the pyloric region of the stomach. The pylorus frequently changes shape with mixing movements because uh, this whole thing functions as a mixing bowl. The cardiac region secretes mu mucus to protect the esophagus from the stomach acid. The, there are three layers of muscle around the stomach. The oblique layer is the inner layer the circular middle layer, and the outer layer is the longitudinal layer. Inside the stomach, there are permanent uh, mucosal folds called rookie, and these will flatten out as the stomach distends as it fills with food. The functions of the stomach include storage of ingested food, storage until it's broken down completely, or completely enough to move on to the next step, mechanical breakdown of ingested food because the bag is a mixing bag covered with muscle, it breaks chemical bonds in food through the action of acid and enzymes, and it produces a substance called intrinsic factor. Um, the lining of the stomach is different from the small intestine. The mucosa has deep folds that will form the gastric glands. Um, so the gastric gland is not on the surface here. It is deep within the mucosa. It's composed of simple columnar epithelium, and it produces a layer of alkaline mucus to protect against the acid and enzymes. So 
uh, again the layers of of the get of the GI tract are quite similar in that they contain the mucosa in this case the mucosa is simple columnar epithelium the lamina propria the muscularis mucosi a thin layer of muscle here just um, deep to the mucosa is the submucosa then the muscularis externa which consists of, of two layers of well the stomach is three layers of muscle other areas it would be two layers of muscle and then finally the, the serosa gastric glands are deep into the lamina propria um, they secrete most of the acid and enzymes there are parietal cells and chief cells they secrete about one and a half liters of gastric juice every day um, they sec the glands in the pyloric region of the stomach secrete mucus and hormones that coordinate and control digestive activity so these gastric pits are are shallow depressions opening onto the surface and each pit uh, communicates with several gastric glands the cells of the gastric glands the parietal cells secrete intrinsic factor this intrinsic factor is necessary for the absorption of vitamin b12 um, it secretes hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid uh, will keep the stomach at a very low pH pH of about one and a half to two and it activates the pepsinogen that is produced by the chief cells the G cells produce a variety of hormones chief cells produce pepsinogen that O gen means that it is not active it is a precursor it will be activated by hydrochloric acid to become pepsin and will digest the proteins infants also produce renin r-e-n-n-i-n and gastric lipase for the digestion of milk the parietal cells do not create hydrochloric acid in their cytoplasm because it would destroy the cells so the hydrogen ion the chloride ions are transported and secreted separately they're secreted into um, the lumen of the stomach the hydrogen ion is generated as carbonic and hydrase converts carbon dioxide and water to carbon carbonic acid you should be familiar with this um, equation this equation um, carbon dioxide and water this equation this takes place in our blood as carbon dioxide mixes with the water in the blood to form carbonic acid and then it dissociates into bicarbonate ions and hydrogen ions the bicarbonate is ejected into the interstitial fluid um, it's sort of an exchange pump for a chloride ion um, from the interstitial fluid the bicarbonate enters the bloodstream if the gastric glands are extremely active the amount of bicarbonate released into the blood is enough to change the pH of the blood it would increase the pH make it more alkaline this sudden flow of bicarbonate ions is called the alkaline tide chloride ions diffuse across the cell and exit into the lumen of the gastric gland and hydrogen ions are also actively transported into the gastric gland lumen so the parietal cells the carbonic anhydrase an enzyme present converts carbon dioxide and water to carbonic acid this carbonic acid dissociates into the bicarbonate ion and the hydrogen ion the the bicarbonate ion diffuses that blue arrow dashed arrow means diffusion diffuses and enters the bloodstream from the interstitial fluid and the chloride ion is transported by a carrier inside into the cell this chloride ion then diffuses into the lumen of the gastric gland the hydrogen from the carbonic um, uh, from the um, carbonic acid 
is transported actively into the lumen of the gastric gland, and then these combine to form hydrochloric acid. Um, the intestinal tract um, itself has specialized structures. It has circular folds, um, mostly in the jejunum, um, roughly 800 folds in the small intestine, and it inside the intestine are intestinal villi, which are finger-like projections of the mucosa covered with microvilli. These add 600 times more surface area for absorption compared to smooth, flat walls. So the whole purpose of the small intestine is to um, digest and absorb nutrients, and it requires a huge surface area to do this. Intestinal glands are located at the base of the villi. Um, the crypts of Lieberkuhn and stem cells actively divide at the base of the glands, replacing the epithelial cells shed by the tips of the villi. So the epithelial surface has to constantly be renewed. Um, so you can see the circular fold here, the circular folds here, and the villi. The internal structure of a villus is important because it contains capillaries, it contains lymphatic capillaries, and um, it's going to carry, uh, absorb nutrients to the hepatic portal vein to the liver for processing. The lymphatic carry transports uh, materials that cannot enter the blood capillaries, such as fatty acids. The brush border is like a velvet carpet on the um, of microvilli on the villus and it again increases surface area for absorption there are enzymes there that digest materials and the epithelial cells can then absorb all those um, digested final products The small intestine um, has three parts. It is instrumental in nutrient digestion and absorption. 90% of nutrient absorption occurs in the small intestine. The rest, maybe 10%, occurs in the large intestine. And there are three main segments of the small intestine, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. The first segment is the duodenum, and this receives chyme from the stomach and all the digestive secretions from the liver, the gallbladder, the pancreas. Most of the duodenum is retroperitoneal. It has many duodenal glands secreting mucus. The main function is to neutralize the acidic chyme. The duodenum in the small intestine cannot handle the acid that the stomach can handle. The second section is the jejunum. It has circular folds and abundant villi. And it's the majority of chemical digestion and nutrient absorption occurs in the jejunum. The third and final segment of the small intestine is the ileum that ends at the ileocecal valve. Um, there's a sphincter here controlling the flow of the uh, final products of the small intestine into the cecum of the large intestine. And here we're going to find um, lymphoid nodules in the submucosa.